The American Homebrewing Association is the predominant homebrewing organization in the United States. It's January, and it's time to start planning all of the homebrewing events that you're going to take part of. So today, I have Matt Bowling, and he's going to discuss all of the AHA events in 2020 and all the great things that your AHA membership can get you. And we're going to talk about all this today on Homebrewing DIY. Building recipes and taking good notes are two of the key fundamentals of making great beer. This is one of the first things that you learn when becoming a new brewer. I started taking notes on a sheet from my extract kit and then quickly moved to brewing software. I've tried many different types of brewing software and then I found Brewfather. This is the one piece of software that you need for recipes and very detailed brew day notes as well as fermentation notes. Brewfather also integrates with some of the topics that we discuss on this show like the tilt hydrometer, the ice spindle, and ferment track. You need no other piece of software than Brewfather. One of the best parts of Brewfather is that you can try it for free. All you need to do is head to our website, homebrewingdiy.beer, and click on the Brewfather banner to sign up for free today. Once again, that's homebrewingdiy.beer, and sign up for Brewfather today. Have you ever wanted to make a podcast? Do you have a subject you want to discuss with listeners? Do you even know where to start? Well, if you want to make a podcast and you want to get started now, I could not recommend Anchor enough. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. Creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. They'll distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. And you can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Hey, look. I shopped around for a place to post my podcast, and Anchor was the easiest, most streamlined experience you could ask for. So if you're looking for a place for your new podcast, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And welcome back to Homebrewing DIY, the show that takes on the do-it-yourself aspect of homebrewing. Gadgets, contraptions, and parts, this show covers it all. On today's show, we're talking to Matt Bowling, the event planner for the AHA about the 2020 events and all of the great things that your American Homebrewer Association membership can get you. But first, I want to thank all of our monthly supporters. It's you that keeps this show going week after week. And... Did you know that you get access to the Homebrewing DIY Discord server when you give it any amount on Patreon? We're also still having our special. For the first $21 supporters, you get access to the full ad-free RSS feed and a logo sticker. You also get a nice shout-out on the show whenever you give. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash homebrewing DIY and support the show today. Once again, that's patreon.com forward slash homebrewing DIY. Another way to support the show is to review us. If you go over to ratethispodcast.com forward slash homebrewing DIY, it's going to give you all of the options where you can leave your review about this podcast. Your reviews help others find this show. The last way to help the show is to head over to our website and use all of our sponsor banners. Clicking on those banners and buying from those sponsors lets them know that we sent you and then they in turn support the show. So head on over, check out the Adventures in Homebrewing link and as well the Brewfather link and click on them and shop and support our sponsors today. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about a project I've been working on. It's been an ongoing thing. Uh, I'm still trying to get my eye spindle project to work, but at this point, I think I'm going to just have to start over. I've struggled to get my ESP8266 to take the software and... I think I've also just messed up the soldering. 
when I uh, I put the the battery in, it actually started smoking. So I, I think I messed something up. I did figure out that I put the temp sensor in backwards, and when they're in backwards, it starts smoking. I did try to fix it, but I think I just need to start over. Uh, I also think I kind of burnt out that temperature unit. Well, it's just kind of part of the gig. But I'm always working on projects like this, and if you ever want to check out these projects, head on over to our social media. I post pictures on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Just look for the handle, at DIY. It's a great way to follow any of these cool ongoing projects that we're working on. Well, I think that's pretty much it for announcements this week, so let's just jump right into the interview. We're going to talk to Matt Bowling from the American Homebrewers Association about all of the 2020 events this year. I'd like to introduce Matt Bowling from the American Homebrewers Association. He's one of the event planners there, and uh, he's decided to join us today on Homebrewing DIY. Uh, welcome, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Uh, you know, let's just get started and jump into a bit about a history of your a bit of history about yourself and how you start got into homebrewing and and eventually how you ended up uh, working at the AHA. Man, so. I started homebrewing, uh, I was just out of college, uh, so this was probably about 2011, 2012, and uh, my dad actually took me on a trip out to Colorado, um, and we got to experience all of the uh, fantastic craft beer that uh, Colorado, the front range of Colorado has to offer, and I got home, and I just couldn't wait to um, to brew my next batch, and I think the way that i I first got my my first homebrewing kit was I actually saw a um, a Groupon that got emailed to me, so I was able to to purchase a homebrew kit through Groupon. But since then, you know, I, th- I think a lot of people get started in the hobby in a similar way by finding some sort of Groupon or discount. But you know, once that I had my kit, then I started going into my local homebrewing supply shop, and when I was living in in Richmond, Virginia, uh, it was called the Weekend Brewer. And uh, I was going in there probably once a week and just picking the brain of that the shop owner and uh, just talking a little bit about my process and slowly improving it. Um, and I got very much into to home brewing to the point that I actually um, I moved to Colorado and uh, started working for the American Homebrewers Association. So I've been working for the AHA for almost seven years. And uh, yeah, my, my title is event planner. So some of the things that I'm responsible for are the execution of HomebrewCon, which is coming up in Nashville, Tennessee, June 18th to the 20th. Uh, the execution of Big Brew Day, which is always the first May, uh, excuse, excuse me, first Saturday in May. Uh, and the execution of our local AHA rallies and uh, Learn to Homebrew Day, which is always the first Saturday in November. So uh, I kind of have my hands in all sorts of things to do with the AHA. Uh, that's awesome. And, and to be honest, I've participated in every single one of those events except that's for Homebrew Con. Except for Homebrew Con, personally. Uh, but that's uh, changing. This is the that's year. To this do year. It, I'm just changing this year. So I'll definitely be there this year. Uh, so, yeah, we're also a Denver homebrewing podcast um, i live in arvada colorado where did you live in denver uh, so i actually lived for a little while i lived downtown in uh right near the baseball stadium and then uh the the, the aha is a, a subsidiary of the brewers association which also puts on the great american beer festival which is one of the things that uh is probably the most visible in the Denver area and, and in the craft beer industry. Uh, and so the Brewers Association office is based in Boulder. So I lived in Boulder for a year and then lived in Longmont uh, after that. That's awesome. Well, l- let's talk about some of the events that might be coming up soon. Uh, like right now, I, I just got the email the other day for the National Homebrew Competition. I know that that kind of comes together really at homebrew con and that's where the the medals are given what 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 would you say to somebody who's maybe never entered that competition and uh what they should be doing to get ready now sure uh the national homebrew competition uh is the largest homebrew competition in the world uh it used to be 
the largest beer competition in the world until uh, the 2019 Great American Beer Festival had slightly more entries than uh, NHC. So they took that title from us, always kind of a little internal competition between which one is bigger, National Homebrew Competition or, or the GABF. Uh, so this is the largest homebrew competition in the world. We typically have about 34, 3,500 people enter the competition. Uh, and you can enter multiple beers. So we usually have, last year we had a little over 9,000 beers were judged in the NHC. Uh, we have entrants from all 50 states and DC and 17 different countries. Uh, so this year will be the 42nd year of the NHC. And the way that it works is you uh, will uh, apply during the open enrollment period uh, to enter the competition. That, that open enrollment is, is open right now through January 22nd. Um, and once that you apply to enter the competition, you'll be notified uh, by February 14th. And then you'll be shipping your entrance, your entries, your beer, uh, to one of 14 different uh, first round sites. And uh, that shipping window is late February to early March. And uh, at those sites, we typically accept, you know, around 900 entries. Uh, and the once that your your beer arrives to one of those uh, judging sites, then you'll be you'll have a team. There's a team of BJCP judges that score your entry, uh, and if it scores highly enough, the, then you will uh, actually be able to move on into the second round of the competition, which always happens during Homebrew Con. Uh, which again this year is in Nashville, Tennessee, June eight, uh, June eighteenth to the twentieth, and uh, once that your your second entry arrives in Nashville, then there is a, a another team of BJCP judges from all over the world that come in and judge your beer and assign scores, and uh, the we we award a gold medal, a bronze, a silver medal, and a bronze medal in each different beer category. And uh, those are awarded during the National Homebrew Competition Awards Ceremony, which is kind of one of the last events to happen during Homebrew Con. And so if you win, you're called up and you get a medal. Uh, and it's just uh, one, of the, one of the most fun events that you can go to. But also, you know, if you win a medal in the National Homebrew Competition, it means that you had the best IPA or stout or Hellas or whatever you brewed in the country out of all everybody that entered their homebrew that year it's a really big deal and uh, i definitely encourage anybody who's you know thinking about getting into uh homebrewing or, or wants to enter their beer into the competition to go to our website homebrewersassociation.org and uh, click on the link for national homebrew competition all that information is right there and um yeah we'd love to have you enter it's it's one of the things that we're most proud of that we do for the homebrewing community. I agree. I, I've definitely entered the national homebrew competition. Uh, my first time was a couple of years ago and uh, it's such an easy process. It's, it's not hard to uh, get accepted. Uh, luckily for me, I'm, I live in Denver, Colorado, so it's not hard for me to get the beer to the judging site because they Denver is one of the judging sites, but even then shipping, shipping a beer isn't a big deal, right? You, you've got to ship your three, uh, four bottles and it's, it's not super hard. And, and I think that it's, it's definitely a competition that if, if you're serious about homebrewing, you should definitely be part of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have, yeah, shipping your beer. I mean, if you live in an area where you can drop it off, obviously that's preferred, but the, the, sh the first round judging sites that you would be shipping to this year are Boston, Cleveland, Denver, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, New York City, Philadelphia, San Diego, San Francisco, Seattle, and Tampa. Yeah, so it's, it's covered pretty well all over the country that uh, even if you have to ship it, you're not shipping it too far. Exactly. Well, what, 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 one last question I have about the homebrewing competition, which is, uh, you said that you do have to qualify. What are what are the actual qualifications to to you know if you if you apply? What what are the qualifications to actually be in the competition? Uh, so anybody that enters the competition does have to be a member of the American Homebrewers Association. So uh, if anybody listening is not a, a member of the AHA, I'm happy to talk a little bit about it. If if that's all right. Yep. 
Cool. So, yeah, the American Homebrewers Association, we're the, we're the only organization uh, in the U.S. that is specifically dedicated to promoting and protecting homebrewer rights. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are a, a subsidiary of the Brewers Association, which uh, works to promote and protect small and independent craft brewers. Uh, the AHA, we were, we were established in 1978 uh, under the, the, the Carter administration when homebrewing was legalized uh, federally. We have about 45,000 members worldwide, and uh, what we're probably the most known for, besides the National Homebrew Competition, is uh, Zymergy Magazine. Uh, it comes out six times per year, and it is filled with all sorts of homebrewing recipes and tips and tricks and articles, and it's just the, the top magazine for homebrewers, and, um, you know, if you become a member, uh, memberships range from one year starts at uh, $38 a year, all the way up to three year memberships. Uh, you know, you're not going to be disappointed just because of the magazine. It's, it's really fantastic. And actually speaking of the competition every year, we publish all of the gold medal winning recipes from the competition into our September, October issue of Zymergy. So just that one issue alone has, guaranteed gold medal winning recipe i i have to say that's one of my favorite episodes uh, one of my not episodes one of my favorite issues of the magazine i i always open it i always go through all those recipes just to see what can i tweak in my own beer to get to that gold medal level right yeah that's great yeah that's one so of our things that everybody looks forward to the most every year yeah, it's a great issue. What what other benefits would you get from your membership? Uh, I know that like there's the Brew Guru app and other things like that. Yeah, so uh, if anybody has heard of uh, the Brew Guru app, it, it kind of if you if you not downloaded it before, you can download it today on Google on Android or iPhone. It'll give you kind of a 30 day trial membership to the American Homebrewers Association. And what Brew Guru is is uh, it's it's basically a mobile version of all of our homebrewer, our, our network of homebrewer discounts that are all over the country. So if you're an AHA member, once you join, you get mailed a membership card or you can access it digitally through the Brew Guru app. And uh, you can take a look at all of the different discounts that uh, breweries offer to homebrewers. So say you're in Denver or you're in uh, San Diego or Baltimore or, or really even just all over the country, we have uh, over 2,300 discounts at breweries. And you go in, you show them that you're an AHA member by flashing your card. And usually they'll give you something like a dollar off a of beer. So if you're you know going to a craft brewery a month, usually your membership is going to pay for itself in about six months. Uh, I think we actually did sort of a test on that a couple of years ago. And I, I was seeing exactly how much money I could save just by being an AHA member and going to breweries regularly. And I think it was like $300 a year for a, a, a 30 or $40 membership. It's, it's really fantastic. Um, other, other benefits, I had mentioned Zymergy, but once you become a member, uh, you can log into the website and search through all of the Zymergy issues going back to the year 2000. So it's over 120 different issues of Zymergy. And again, each year we publish all of those gold medal winning recipes. So you can access all the gold medal winning recipes from every year for the last 20 years. And we have other recipes that are locked on the website for members. Uh, we actually have over a thousand uh, uh, recipes for our members. Um, and we had, we had mentioned HomebrewCon before. Uh, so one of the, one of the benefits of going to HomebrewCon is it's three days of just sort of homebrewing, uh, just homebrewing heaven kind of, <laughs> I don't really know the best word to put on it, but it's, Three days, you're giving, you're, there, there are all sorts of homebrewing presentations from some of the top homebrewing minds in, in the country. Uh, Denny Kahn, Drew Beecham, Gordon Strong, Jamil Zanishev, John Palmer, uh, Ken Schramm. All these really fantastic brewers are coming and they're giving presentations to people who attend HomebrewCon. Um, and we actually record all of those presentations and put them on the website too. So if you're an AHA member, you can log in and you have access to over 430 hours of brewing knowledge from some of the best brewers in the world. Um, so, you know, we've, we, the, the AHA, you know, those are just the benefits to joining, but we are also very much involved in uh, promoting and protecting the hobby, as I had mentioned before. So, 
when I actually first joined the AHA, it was in 2013 uh, when I came on staff and homebrewing was still not legal in all 50 states. Uh, we, we were still working to get homebrewing legislation passed in Alabama and Mississippi. Uh, so we did get that passed in the year 2013. It's now legal in all 50 states, but there's still homebrewing, you know, government affairs and all things to do with homebrewing that happen around the country. Uh, we're working on legislation issues in Arkansas, Hawaii, Ohio, New York, North Carolina, and Wisconsin right now. Each one of those is different, but usually they have something to do with, um, you know, where you can bring homebrew or where you can consume homebrew and things like that. Um, we also work to uh, lobby for homebrewing rights federally. We actually had a, um, a, a hill a Capitol Hill homebrew. Let me rephrase. I'm sorry. I'm getting caught up on myself. Capitol Hill staff homebrew competition uh, in November where we had um, hit members of Congress's staff entered into this homebrewing competition. Um, and we awarded the, the winner of that competition went to, um, it was a, it was a congressman from Florida. His somebody from his office won it. And anyway, uh, my, my point is just bring up the fact that we're very much involved in trying to make sure that homebrewing rights are protected around the country on the state level and on the federal level. So the AHA, yeah. great benefits, but also really working to make sure that homebrewing stays an active hobby. Yeah, and I, I want to speak to that. Me personally have benefited from the work that the AHA did. I, I actually am originally from Utah, which as we know, Utah is not known well for its amazing liquor laws. And I believe in 2008 or 2010, don't quote me on the year, you guys worked to get homebrewing legal there. And uh, it was it was a game changer because when I wanted to homebrew, there was no legal issues for me when I got out there to do it. That's right. Uh, yeah, I don't know the exact year, but uh, Utah was one of the, before 2013, Utah was one of the last states to adopt homebrewing legislation. So I appreciate you saying that. I mean, it's it's something that I, uh, you know, we, we talk about all these great things that the AHA does with, with the magazine and the discounts and homebrew con, but there's a lot of work that goes into making sure that um, any kind of homebrewing legislation is addressed on a state level. And there's 50 different states with 50 different sets of laws that we uh, are, are constantly working to make sure they stay favorable for home brewers. Yep. And, and I will throw a pro tip if you are in Utah and listening to the show. If you become a home brewer, uh, one of the positives of that is it is the only way to get draft beer at home in Utah because draft beer is still legal to purchase and buy in the state of Utah. So kind of a weird tip. <laughs> yeah, interesting yeah you you can go and buy it at a, at a at a at a bar or something like that but you could never actually go into a store and buy a keg and bring it home that is actually against the law in utah so it, oh wow yeah so uh for me it was i wanted to have draft beer at home and home brewing was the way and uh it obviously became a great hobby so here here i am doing a whole podcast on it so it's kind of funny <laughs> how 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 that tur morphs into a whole thing uh, similar to my story yeah, totally. And that's kind of how uh, when I talk to other homebrewers, that's a, a similar story. You kind of start off with the kit or an extract kit or some guys go straight to all grain. But even then, you kind of start somewhere and then it just morphs into the process, the 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 community, the 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 engagement behind it all, even just making something that your friends come over and enjoy sharing with you becomes addicting in a way and not addicting like alcohol is addicting addicting uh, in the way of the community right and really? so yeah so for me it's it's something where uh i i the community even specifically uh not just uh the ha community but just the community of homebrewers in general is something that i is what what drives me but speaking of the ha community one of my favorite features is the ha forum and so I, I'm very active on that forum. And uh, I think that, you know, obviously you have to be a member to access that. And that's something I love about the HA as well. Actually, no, you, uh, I just want to point out, you don't have to be a member to be on the AHA forum. That's that's free for anybody to join. So, oh, and it, uh, yeah. And it's yeah. one of the most active homebrewing forums out there. Uh, we have actually a – so the AHA um, – Part of our operational uh, design is we we actually have a, a team of elected homebrewers called our governing committee, uh, and we have 15 people that are 
we have, we hold elections every single year and uh, they have seats for three years on that committee. And these are all volunteers, uh, people who are just really interested in, in home brewing um, and want to better the hobby. So the, the governing committee is elected and actually a lot of them are uh, very active on that forum. Um, you know, Denny Khan, I think he's, he's, he's probably very well known by some of your listeners. He's has several books, uh, and post the, the experimental brewing podcast with Drew Beecham. Uh, he's one of the very, uh, popular, very active members, of the AHA forum. And, you know, if you have any question about home brewing, the AHA forum is, you're going to get an answer to it on, on that forum if it's not already answered. So yeah, that's another great thing to point out. If you, you go to our website, homebrewersassociation.org, there's a big tab right at the top that says forum. Uh, I think we have over a hundred thousand users on there. So you're guaranteed to have somebody answer any homebrewing question. Yep. And, and, and that's really the idea is when you're just starting out, getting those questions answered really helps you up your, up your game when it comes to making better beer. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about some of the other events. Uh, I know that we, you, you talked about the, the big brew day in, in May. Well, what is that and how to, how does that work? Sure. So big brew is held the first Saturday in May. Um, Basically, it's it's a way for us to recognize National Homebrew Day. So uh, in 1988, actually, Congress did recognize May 7th as National Homebrew Day. Um, however, you know, as most people can attest to, brewing on uh, uh, if, it, if May 7th can fall on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday, um, and it's 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 hard to to brew a beer on, on a school night, you know? So we always uh, hold big brew in the first Saturday in May. Uh, it's, Cause it's always right around May 7th. And it's just kind of our way of honoring national homebrew day. And uh, the way it works is we, we encourage anybody who's interested in hosting a homebrewing demonstration or a brew day to register it with us. Uh, last year we had over 300 different big brew sites. Uh, usually they're homebrew shops or breweries or sometimes clubs will will just host one at, a, at one of their members' houses. Uh, sometimes restaurants will do them. Actually, I think we have, we have a couple of libraries, municipal offices do them in the past. Uh, and so the, the entire day is dedicated to brewing uh, and we have official recipes that get posted every single year and we encourage everybody to to brew the the official recipe of the year of course that's not an not a required part of it lots of people brew their own whatever they want but um, it's just kind of a, a cool way to know that on the day that you're brewing that there's over 3,000 people who are also brewing and mashing in at the exact same time. Um, we do a simultaneous toast every year at one o'clock Eastern. So, you know, maybe the site that you go to only has 30 or 40 people, but you know that right at one o'clock Eastern, uh, people at over 300 registered big brew sites are also toasting along and just celebrating this hobby that we all love. Uh, that, that's a it's a really great event, and if if you've never attended one of them, I highly recommend it. I have fun doing it every year. It's it's such a good time. Uh, and then, of course, the next event that uh, is big for you is Homebrew Con. And uh, uh, why, why, why don't you give me the breakdown of what Homebrew Con looks like for the average person who's never been? Oh man, you have to go and experience it yourself. I really can't put it in words. And you know, if you've never been to Homebrew Con before. I think this is the the year to come because we're going to Nashville, Tennessee. It'll be our first time ever bringing the conference to Nashville. Um, this is we've been doing this conference. This is the forty second annual, uh, formerly known as the National Homebrewers Conference, but uh, it was hard. It didn't really roll off the tongue very well, so it's been we, we renamed it to HomebrewCon a couple of years ago, um, and it's just it's my favorite event of any beer event that I've ever been to. And most people who have been will probably agree with me. The way that it works is the tickets go on sale on March 7th. And um, we are going to be hosting the event at the Gaylord Opryland uh, just outside of Nashville. Um, you can register as a, a, a brewer or as a, an enthusiast, meaning 
that you can bring a, uh, a spouse or a friend or, or whatever uh, who maybe isn't totally into the hobby quite yet, but still wants to come with you. Um, so we're there's three days and each day has just a packed schedule of all sorts of homebrewing presentations from some of the top homebrewing luminaries in the country. Each presentation usually lasts about an hour and it could be on anything. It could be on dry hopping. It could be on beer and food pairing. It could be on, uh, we had one a couple of years ago from uh, Scratch Brewing Company, which is very well known for brewing with just all sorts of eccentric ingredients. And I think that they gave a presentation on like brewing with tree bark. So that's one of, you know, the beautiful things about the hobby and the beautiful things about Homebrew Con is you're going to be able to find subjects that are definitely of interest to a lot of people like like dry hopping or mash mash pH, but also there's these really cool niche topics that we present every year. Um, and so each night there's a different event. The first night on, on Thursday, June 18th, um, is the kickoff party. And that's where all of the local brewers come and pour their beer for everybody who attends the conference. Um, you, you show up to the conference and you get a small glass that you hold on to throughout the three days. Uh, and you, you know, the pours are limited to about two or three ounces. So it's not like you're walking around with a, a full beer. You're able to, to really enjoy the, the thousands of different kinds of beer and different kinds of homebrew that are being poured throughout the, the conference. So Thursday night is the, the kickoff party. And then Friday, same thing, all seminars throughout the day, and there's various meetups and uh, different vendors are there who are showing off the latest and greatest in homebrewing technology and equipment in our expo hall. So, you know, the guys from, from Blickman Engineering are there, John Blickman, um, all of the, the hop suppliers, BSG, and, um, you know, Country Malt Group, they're all showing off just some of the greatest new products that they've got for home brewers uh, throughout the entire day. And then Friday night is what many people kind of consider to be the marquee event of homebrew con. And that's club night. And if you've ever heard of club night, or if you've ever heard of homebrew con, you know that club night is just the homebrewing party of the year. I always tell people, you know, bring your homebrew, but bring a camera because you're going to want to, you're going to want both. There's different, different clubs from the area and, and from surrounding States all really go all out. They each get a booth space and they design their booth up into these really elaborate setups. And usually each one has a different theme. Um, we were in Providence, Rhode Island in June 2019 for HomebrewCon, and the one of the larger local homebrew clubs there was the Rhode Island Brewing Society, and I remember they had um, – their booth was designed to look like the, uh, the boat from Jaws. And all of their members were dressed up as, as sailors, and it was – all their beers were, like, nautical-themed. It's just – Every single booth has a different theme and, and everybody's in costumes and just having a great time. And it's just, it, it's hard to explain. You really just have to experience it for yourself. If you're a home brewer and you've never gone to homebrew con before, club night this year is going to be so fantastic because it's going to be at, at, as I mentioned before, the Gaylord Opryland, which is just a, a beautiful property. Uh, there's an indoor, you know, shopping center area with like a, a river going through the hotel with a little boat and just the, the aesthetics of the area that we're holding the conference this year are, are just can't be beat. Um, and so club night, you know, is, is on Friday night, the next day on Saturday, there's more seminars, more meetups, more shopping in the expo. And then that afternoon we hold the national homebrew competition awards ceremony, which I already had mentioned before, but everybody who wins a gold or silver or bronze medal, um, gets called up on stage and, and receives their medal. Uh, we also hand out awards for national homebrewer of the year, mead maker of the year, cider maker of the year, um, the, the Radagast club of the year, which goes to kind of the homebrew club that not only promotes homebrewing, but promotes, community service and, and all sorts of things. So the, the award ceremony is just its own 
party and within itself because everybody's cheering and is so excited for their fellow brewers who win medals. It's, it's another one of those pieces of the conference that you really can't miss. Uh, and then that, that right after the award ceremony, we have the knockout party where um, we have all of the actual uh, competition beer that we bring out for people to kind of, you know, drink and, and just judge on their own because not every, everybody who comes to the, conference is attending but some of them actually are judges in the nhc final round but not everybody gets to judge them so they get a chance to kind of see what the the quality of the beer is that makes it to the final round and during that party we're also raffling off a bunch of prizes usually you can win a, a lifetime membership to the aha or tickets to homebrew con the next year and we've got some complimentary food and stuff so um that's kind of homebrew con in an essence but also just the entire host city that you go that we go to every year kind of rolls out the red carpet for all of the attendees. So every every brewery that you go to has got some sort of special beer that they're pulling out from their cellar or doing some sort of special vertical tasting or or party for people who are at the conference because you know most most people that started a brewery actually started out as home brewers. So this is kind of their way to show a little bit of love to to the entire home brewing world because not only are attendees at HomebrewCon coming from, from all over the country, they're coming from all over the world. We have people come in from different countries. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, again, Nashville, Tennessee, June 18th to the 20th. Uh, if you're interested, tickets go on sale in March. And we'd love to have you join us because this is going to be the year that you're not going to want to miss. Go to homebrewcon.org to find out all the uh, information about everything to do with the conference. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to go this year. Uh, and then the, the kind of last event that you talked about is the learn to homebrew day. Um, I personally, this is one that, uh, I've really, uh, taken seriously. Uh, I, I, I'm a, an evangelist when it comes to the homebrewing community. And so every year when it's been homebrewing, learn to homebrew day for me personally, uh, I go to whatever city I've lived in. So when I lived in Salt Lake city, I would go to the local, uh, Salt Lake city subreddit and I would post, Hey, I would love to show somebody how to homebrew. So if you're interested, let me know. And every year I've had so many people come over to my house and we just do a, a whole homebrew, uh, homebrew day. And uh, it's a really great experience. But, you know, what, what does the organization actually do for that event? Sure. Um, so we promote Learn to Homebrew Day as being the official event for, you know, people who are interested in getting into the hobby. Just as you mentioned, you know, one of the greatest parts of homebrewing as as you had said before is we all get into this hobby for similar reasons and that's that you know beer is awesome and we want to learn how to make it but a lot of people don't realize that there's this really fantastic community of people driving this hobby as well so a lot of them are, are belong to local homebrew clubs and a lot of them are are going out and working as evangelists for homebrewing at this uh learn to homebrew day event so it's very similar to big brew uh where we register sites around the country and anybody who's interested in going and learning a little bit about the process can go to one of those sites and just kind of get get to see it firsthand because you know I, I remember when i was first getting into homebrewing um you know, there's a lot of words that are used when people are talking about home brewing that you're just not really sure what that is until you actually see it. Like sparging, you, I don't. You, it's hard to explain what a sparge is or what flocculate means and things like that. So, you know, when we established Learn to Homebrew Day, we realized that you know it's going to be a lot easier to get people into the hobby and a lot easier for them to get into the hobby if they can just go and see what it looks like up close and not have to read about it and try their try their best shot just by going off of a book which you know most people certainly get into it that way but this is just kind of our way of working with people who are excited about the hobby to show it off to other would-be hobbyists so that's always the first saturday in november so this year it will be uh, november 7th and um yeah we usually have this year we had 199 events so almost broke 200 but usually it's right around there and and any other kind of small regional events that you you guys do throughout the year 
So we do um, what's called AHA rallies. Uh, we've, we've scaled a little bit back on them, but we still do a few of them throughout the year. And these are just kind of open house events for members of the AHA to go to one of their local small and independent craft breweries. Uh, and usually e each one is a little bit different, but uh, usually you can expect to get like a complimentary beer of some sort uh, and also take a take a tour of the brewery and just get your chance to kind of meet the brewer and pick their brains a little bit about the brewing process and sometimes there's different themes to each one so sometimes they'll have little competitions or uh, we've a really popular thing that we've done in the past is it's called a work giveaway or a work share where um, people show up to the rally and they bring you know a pre-sanitized fermentation vessel of some time some some kind usually a, a carboy but uh sometimes plastic buckets and they get to go home with usually five gallons of unfermented wort that the brewery brew that day uh and they can take it home and pitch whatever yeast they want or maybe they want to add some sort of tincture like uh, vanilla or some sort of spice to it and it's just kind of the brewery is providing these home brewers with a blank canvas of of a beer to do whatever they want with it so that's always a really popular one um but yeah those if you're interested in, in seeing what rallies we've got planned you can go to the website and look under the events tab and um there we, we'll be doing you know six or seven of them throughout the country this year uh, that's awesome. Is there, uh, you know, if there, if if I were brand new to homebrewing and uh, you you were telling me, hey, what what's the the number one way to really become engaged with the community? Uh, what what advice would you give me today? Go to your local homebrew club meeting. I mean, that's as I was mentioning before. We all get into into homebrewing because because we want to learn about how to make beer, but. Um, Homebrew clubs, I've always said, are are the heart of the hobby, kind of. Um, we have a, a directory on our website that lists every homebrew club in the country. We've got about 2,100 different homebrew clubs, uh, and so you're guaranteed to find one that's in your area. And I remember when I first started in the hobby, you know, I went to my local homebrew club meeting, and I was reading a lot about how to homebrew and, and listening to a lot of podcasts, but I don't think that there is a a better way of improving your process than by going to one of those local club meetings and just kind of talking to different people about how they make their beer or, or bring your own beer. If, if, if your if the laws in your state allow it, obviously, um, and have people kind of taste it and give you feedback and, you know, homebrew clubs also, they're not, you know, a lot of them are, are typically just, um, for specifically focused on home brewing, but a lot of them also really do some some really cool stuff for their community. So uh, one of the things I was mentioning before was uh, the annual Radagast Club of the Year award that we give out, uh, and that's to the homebrew club that kind of emulates what it means to to be a good example for their community. Uh, we've been doing this award for the last six years, um, and the the club that won it this year was. Uh, Quaff in San Diego, and some of the things that they were doing, they they uh, work to, um, they were setting up BJCP classes across the border in Tijuana to actually get um, homebrewers in Mexico interested into the hobby. Um, some other things that they were doing were um, they they did a couple of collaborations for a. Uh, beer with some local breweries to raise money for a, um, a club member's daughter who I believe uh, she was diagnosed with, I believe it was leukemia uh, and, and she's since made a full recovery. But, you know, a lot of that, those funds that the club helped raise went to some of those medical bills. So um, that's just the most recent club to have won, won this award. Um, the Oregon Brew Crew before them in Portland, Oregon. They do, I believe, a big toy drive every year to donate toys to um, com the, their community. Uh, the Hogtown Brewers in Gainesville, Florida, I believe they do a um, like a river cleanup where everybody in the club um, 
gets into a kayak or a canoe or something every year and they go and clean up the one of their local waterways and when they finish their their cleanup day i believe that they do like a little homebrew camping trip so you know the the amount of effort that these clubs are putting into their diversity efforts their philanthropy efforts um their their home promotion of the hobby presentation of of brewing and and getting new people into the hobby and just their overall just awesomeness is one of the things that this award is is dedicated to so you know as i was mentioning going to uh, a, a club will definitely help improve you as a brewer but you're definitely going to find a community there because you're going to be you're going to find that a lot of them are doing stuff that are related to beer but and home brewing, but are you know more focused on making an impact. And I've always just found that to be one of the coolest parts of, of belonging to a homebrew club is they're really a true community and they're a community for, for home brewers. Yeah, and, and the Home Brewers Association is also very supportive of clubs. Um, what are some of the things that the association does to help support those clubs of, other than like the directory? Sure. So uh, one of the things that we started doing, uh, it was in 2014, we launched a, a club insurance program. Um, so, you know, with anything to do with homebrew clubs, a lot of times there's just the nature of it. There's consumption of homebrew, there's consumption of alcohol, and there's a lot of risk that can be involved with homebrew club meetings or homebrew club events where people are uh, possibly intoxicated um, or just in areas where you know there was a club a couple of years ago i believe that had not there was a a young woman that showed up to one of their events and i don't believe she was even uh partaking in any alcohol but uh there was a speaker that uh they were using that day that fell and landed on this young woman's foot and uh, i believe it actually um she had to get some medical attention that day but the club was covered by the insurance program um and so that was something that the club could have been held liable for. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. And so the, the club insurance program, uh, we launched it as a way for homebrew clubs to, to enroll and protect themselves from general liability and, and alcohol liability. So for $3.75 per member per year, uh, the club is covered for up to a million dollars per occurrence um, of any any kind of uh, liability claim like that. Um, and we actually have about 450 clubs that take advantage of the program every year. So, you know, there's 2,100 clubs in the country, about 450 take advantage of the program. So not quite 25%, but about 20, I guess, I don't know the math off the top of my head, but a, a large, large portion of those clubs take advantage of it. And um, it's something that we're proud to offer to homebrew clubs because before this program was launched, I believe there were several clubs that came to us and let us know that they were finding coverage on the open market for stuff like this, and it was costing them thousands of dollars. But the way that we're able to offer this program for at such an affordable rate is that we have so many clubs enrolled in it. And the AHA, we don't actually profit anything from this program. We It's underwritten by West Insurance, so the, the premium... Uh, dues payments go to the insurance pro the insurance company we don't take any of that so we want to make it as affordable for clubs as possible and so clubs that used to be paying thousands of dollars for this kind of coverage can now get that same level of coverage for you know may maybe 100 bucks or less and it's yeah. it's just something that we've really seen take off and we're really proud to offer it and support the homebrew clubs as much as we can yeah, and I think that that program is is something that you know maybe is a little under the hood, and people don't know that that's a thing that you guys are doing. But those under the hood benefits are, are show the power of of community and being able to kind of go out and shop that on the open market to really uh, show clubs that hey, we, we're working for you too, and not just uh, you know uh, the, the the clubs aren't just benefiting from a directory it's it's there's actually work being done there huh, totally it's not yeah. one of the uh most most exciting topics to talk about when you talk about home brewing i get it but it's no. uh, it's definitely yeah. an important one yeah it's important though i, I think to me it, it, safety is something that we should all be thinking about especially you know uh 
I mean, to be honest, uh, when I had my wedding back in 2011, I had to buy liability insurance for that because we were serving alcohol. That is just part of the game. And so if you're, if you're any type of person that's doing any type of event and being responsible, you're going to have those type of things in place. So that, that just makes total sense. Uh, well, Matt, I, I think we're kind of rolling up on time. So I want to, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today uh, for taking the time to explain to us all the great things that the HA is doing for the home brewing community and, uh, and really just coming and taking your time out of your busy day to, uh, uh, to educate all of us that are listening on all of the great things that you guys are doing. Absolutely. Thanks so much for, for having me. I, I feel like I just got started. There's so much more that, you know, that the HA does for the hobby that I, all, a lot of stuff that's under the hood, just as you mentioned. So, you know, if, if anybody is an AHA member that's listening to this, you can definitely uh, rest assured that your membership dues are going towards some real uh, uh, concrete promotion and protection of the hobby, as well as your own benefits. And if anybody is interested in, in joining the AHA, we definitely recommend going to the website, homebrewersassociation.org, and uh, signing up. You won't regret it. The, the benefits are fantastic. I was a member before I started working for the AHA. And now that I do work for the AHA, it's, it's one of the coolest, coolest parts of my job to be able to um, talk about all of the, the great stuff that the, the AHA does for the hobby. So, so yeah, thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate it. I'd like to thank Matt for joining me on this week's show. It was really great to talk to him and to find out about all the great things that are happening over at the HA. I also had a bit of a sound issue, as you could tell in the interview. Matt and I had a problem connecting, and I actually had to do it in a conference room and work, so I apologize. That's not normally my sound quality, so uh, if this is your first show, listen to others. They do sound a bit better, at least on my side. Well, that's it for this week, and we'll see you next. Thanks, and Have a great week on Homebrewing DIY.